Do you want to know how to lay out receptacle outlets in a residential unit, hotel room, apartment, dormitory, and other similar areas? What are the rules of the code when it comes to the placement of outlets? Which areas in dwelling units that the code required an outlet? Our topic is about receptacle outlets, where required. Hello, fellow electrical practitioners, electricians, and future engineers. This video will discuss the required outlets for dwelling units covered under Section 2.10.3 of the 2017 Philippine Electrical Code. Our electrical code has many provisions concerning the general areas of residential buildings from inside and outside. Learning these provisions pertaining to residential units is very important, because these provisions are the foundation for all residential wiring. What are the code rules for the provision of receptacle outlets? In Section 2.10.3, Required Outlets, this section covers the general rule that applies to the installation of receptacle outlets in any type of occupancy or premises. In addition to the typical receptacle outlet installation, the code also permits cord pendant and cord connection outlets as receptacle outlets that comply with the required outlet as stated in paragraphs A and B. An outlet dedicated to specific appliances in dwelling units shall be installed within 1,800 mm from the intended location of the appliance to be served. For dwelling units requirements, we can refer to subsection 2.10.3.3. This subsection set forth a whole list of rules requiring specific installations of receptacle outlets in all areas of dwelling units and other occupancies that conform with the definition of dwelling units, such as one-family residential unit, apartments, dormitories, and similar areas. In paragraph A, receptacle outlets on fixed spacing must be installed in every room of a dwelling unit such as the kitchen, family room, dining room, living room, parlor, library, den, sunroom, bedroom, recreation room, or similar room or area. Areas not specified such as laundry area, hallway, foyer, bathroom, garage, outdoor, balcony, porch and also countertops and work surfaces has different rules for receptacle outlets. In paragraph A1, specified that, receptacles are needed in every room such that no point on a wall is over 1,800 mm or 6 feet from an outlet. This means you need an outlet within 1,800 mm, 6 feet, of a doorway, wardrobe, or fireplace. For a long wall such as this, the maximum distance between two outlets is 3,600 mm. Ensure that no point on the wall is more than 1,800 mm of a doorway. Hence, check the distance between the edge. These are more than 1,800 mm. Therefore, additional outlets to be provided. How about this short wall space? In paragraph A2, if the length of the wall is 600 mm and more, an outlet will be required. Further, for a fixed panel mentioned in paragraph A2 item number 2, a fixed panel is considered wall space. Hence, an outlet is required. For the space afforded by fixed room dividers, such as freestanding bar type counters or railings as shown, this divider and railing are considered a wall space, hence, outlets are required. This layout complied with the minimum requirements of section 2.10.3.3A1 and 2 of PEC. However, you can have more outlets as needed, just to ensure that there is no point on the wall is more than 1,800 mm from a doorway wardrobe or fireplace, and the maximum spacing between two outlets is not more than 3,600 mm. Let's have another floor plan. Receptacle outlets are already in place. The fireplace is not considered a wall space. Then for the long wall, ensure the distance from each outlet is not more than 3,600 mm. Then check the spacing to see if it complies with paragraph A1. If this wall space is 600 mm or more, an outlet is required. What if this fixed panel is full glass and an outlet cannot be installed to the wall? Hence, use a floor outlet to comply with paragraph A2. What are the rules for required outlets using floor outlets? In paragraph A3, floor outlets must be within 450 mm from the wall. In this photo, the wall space is more than 600 mm, which means an outlet is required. However, there is an outlet in the countertops within 1,800 mm from the edge of the door. Is this outlet counted as a required outlet? In paragraph A4 of section 2.10.3.3, if an outlet is for the countertops or work surfaces, even as within the spacing required in paragraph A1, 
this outlet is not considered to comply with the required outlet. Hence, an additional outlet within this area is required. What are the rules for the countertops and workspaces? In section 2.10.3.3, c. An outlet is required in countertops and workspace of kitchen, pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, and similar rooms must comply with section 2.10.3.3, c.1 through c.5. Paragraph C1 of section 2.10.3.3 states that, a countertop having a width of 300 mm or wider shall have an outlet that no point on a wall is over 600 mm or 24 inches an outlet. The maximum distance between two outlets is 1,200 mm or 48 inches. Exception. For a countertop with ranges as shown in figure 1, if the cooking range is extending from face of counter, an outlet is not required if the distance between the back of the range and the wall is less than 300 mm. In figure 2, if the cooking range is mounted in the corner, an outlet is not required if the distance between the back of the range and the wall is less than 450 mm. Island countertops with spaces of 600 mm or greater for a long side and more than 300 mm or more on the short side shall have at least one outlet. Also, for peninsular countertop, at least one receptacle outlet is required if the long side is 600 mm or more and the short side is 300 mm or more. If a counter is separated by an appliance such as a refrigerator, range tops, or sink, it is considered a separate countertop space. It shall comply with paragraph C1, which is countertops with 300 mm or more in width shall have a receptacle outlet that no point on a wall is over 600 mm. If an island countertop is separated by a range, countermounted cooking unit, or sink, if X is less than 300 mm, this is considered a two-island countertop and must comply with 2.10.3.3c, for any island countertop having a dimension of 600 mm or more on one side, and 300 mm or more on the other side, a receptacle outlet is required. Same with the peninsular countertop, if X is less than 300 mm, this will be considered as two peninsular countertop, and must comply with 2.10.3.3c. While required outlets installed in bathrooms shall be within 900 mm of the outside edge of each basin. This receptacle shall not be located more than 300 mm below the top of the basin or basin countertop. For the outdoor required outlets, we can refer to subsection 2.10.3.3, E1, through E3. For one or two family dwelling units, at least one outlet is required at the back and front with a maximum height distance from the grade level as 2,000 mm. For multifamily dwelling units as stated in section 2.10.3.3, E2, at least one outlet for each dwelling unit located at ground floor level that has an individual entrance. These outlets must be readily accessible and be installed with a maximum height of 2,000 mm from the grade level. For balconies, decks, and porches, as stated in section 2.10.3.3, E3, at least one accessible receptacle outlet is required to be installed at a maximum height of 2,000 mm from the walking surface. For laundry areas as stated in section 2.10.3.3, F, at least one outlet is designated for laundry equipment, such as a washing machine and gas clothes dryer. If an electric dryer will be provided, an additional outlet is required, and it must be in a dedicated branch circuit. If a gas clothes dryer is to be provided, both the washing machine and gas dryer can be plugged into the same outlet. A receptacle outlet for laundry equipment shall not be required if a multifamily building will provide laundry facilities on its premises for the use of building occupants, as stated in exception 1. At least one outlet is required for the basements, garages, and accessory buildings, of one, and two family buildings as specified in sections 2.10.3.3, G1, through 3. In paragraph 1, for an attached or detached garage with electric power, an outlet shall be installed in each bay at the maximum height of 1,700 mm, while in paragraph 2, for an accessory building with electric power, at least one outlet is required. If the garage does not have an electric supply, an outlet shall not be required. Same with the accessory building. While in basements, 
A receptacle outlet is required in each separate unfinished portion. For the dwelling unit's hallway as stated in subsection 2.10.3.3, H, if a hallway is 3000 mm or more in length, provide at least one receptacle outlet. The hallway length shall be considered the length along the centerline of the hallway without passing through a doorway. Hence, our measurement shall start from this area. If this is equal to 3000 mm or more, a receptacle outlets are required. This requirement does not apply to common hallways of hotels, motels, apartment buildings, condominiums, and similar occupancies. If foyers are not part of the hallway, and having an area greater than 5.6 square meter, or 60 square feet, a receptacle outlet is required in each wall space 900 millimeters or more in width. For doorways with door side windows that extend to the floor, the measurement shall start from the edge of the door side windows. If the door side windows did not extend to the floor, measurement shall start from the edge of the door. Section 210, 3.14 states that, at least one accessible outlet is required in servicing heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration equipment. This outlet must be installed within 7,500 mm from the equipment it serves, and the location of the outlet must be at the same level as the equipment. During repair of the equipment, the disconnect means will be on-off position for the safety of technician. Hence, service outlet must be connected on the line side of the disconnect means, if it is connected in the same branch circuit. Evaporative coolers of one or two family dwelling is exempted from this section. Section 2.10.3.15 Electrical service area, this section is for multi-family dwelling units and it is mentioned in exemption number 1. For the indoor service area, at least one outlet is required in an accessible location within 7,500 mm from the indoor electrical service equipment. This outlet must be in the same room as the service equipment. This also exempts, if the service voltage is over 120 volts to ground and services dedicated to equipment covered in Article 6.75, Irrigation Machines, and 6.82, Naturally and Artificially Made Bodies of Water, as stated in Exception 2. We have now identified which areas of the dwelling units the code required an outlet to be installed. Further, we also learned which type of outlet installation is considered to comply with the required outlets as specified in subsections 2.10.3.1a and b. How about an outlet installation that does not meet the receptacle outlet spacing requirement? We can find that in subsection 2.10.3.3. Let's have an example. In the photo shown, an outlet is required in the shaded area to comply with section 2.10.3. However, you installed an outlet that is part of the luminaire, as stated in bullet number 1, if an outlet is part of a luminaire or appliance. This outlet does not meet the requirements. You provide an additional outlet. However, this is controlled by a wall switch. Bullet number 2, states that if an outlet is controlled by a wall switch under 2.10.3.21, a. 1. Exception number 1. This outlet does not meet the requirements. An additional outlet is provided. However, it was installed inside the cupboard or cabinets. This installation does not meet the requirement as stated in bullet number 3. An outlet is provided. However, it was more than 1,700 mm in height. And in bullet number 4, this also did not meet the requirements. Hence, an additional outlet is required. Further, if permanently installed electric baseboard heaters equipment with factory installed receptacle outlets, or outlets provided as a separate assembly by the manufacturer, it shall be permitted as the required outlet. In conclusion, receptacle outlet placement and spacing are one of the requirements of residential wiring. Outlet spacing affects the safety, convenience, and efficiency of your electrical system. If you only have a few outlets, you may end up using extension cords, power strips, or adapters, which can result in tripping hazards, electrocution, overloading, and fire hazards. Anyone who designs, installs, or inspects electrical systems in dwelling units must be thoroughly familiar with these requirements to protect people and property from electrical hazards. Thank you for watching. If want to know more about required outlets and the electrical code, please follow my channel.